Today, we will be sorting every spec into three levels of difficulty, easy, medium, and hard. These kinds of lists can be confusing, and some people might get upset that their spec is in the easy category. But remember, there's a difference between skill floors and skill ceilings, and today we only care about having a low skill floor. In PvP, this mostly means having a simple rotation and a straightforward win condition. If you don't have many rotational buttons to press and don't need to multitask, that generally means having a low skill floor. And this video is mostly concerned with mechanics more than anything else. Does the relative strength of a spec influence how easy or hard it is? Of course. Just think about last season. Ret Paladin was so easy to pick up because it was literally broken for a few weeks. But if we only thought about the strength of a spec when assigning it a difficulty, we'd just be making a tier list. Instead, we gave each spec a difficulty ranking with a huge emphasis on mechanics and how they determine whether a spec has a low skill floor, which means an easier time seeing instant returns on time invested. But first, if you're anything like me, every update or new patch that happens presents a ton of new questions, like how's my spec doing, what gear do I want, or how good is this new talent? What's frustrating though, is that unless you're lucky enough to have your favorite PvP streamer notice you spamming in their chat, finding answers to these types of questions can be near impossible. If only a place existed where you had direct contact to some of the best players in the world. A place where you could simply click on a button, write any PvP related question imaginable, and have it answered within just minutes. Oh, if only. <coughs> Dan, wake up. Stop daydreaming. You're quite literally describing the exact service we offer to all skill cap members in our Ask a Pro channel. Ugh, whoa, where'd you come from? So, you're telling me, in addition to all the amazing content over on the site, like those up-to-date damage guides and in-depth videos on key fundamentals, I also get direct access to the pros on top of that? What's the catch? There isn't one, Dan. All skill cap subscribers are backed up by a rank up guarantee, meaning if you don't significantly improve while actively using our service, then you get your money back. No questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below and get the rating you've always wanted this season. Well, let's get back to the video. Being an easy melee DPS involves having a simple rotation, high mobility, passive defense, and not being as reliant on CC to set up kills. Fury Warrior is the perfect example of a spec that checks all of these boxes. Rotationally, Fury has one of the most streamlined rotations, with a grand total of four buttons, including two that only get pressed when they light up. This makes dealing damage very straightforward, which goes hand in hand with the Fury Warrior win condition, which is just to pump out as much DPS as possible. And with a root breaker on a 20 second cooldown, Fury has some of the best mobility out of any melee spec. Sure, warriors have some control options, but at their core, they just want to have uptime and maximize pressure. This is also why we're including Arms Warrior in the easy category. Huge disclaimer, Arms is more complex than Fury, but still has a low barrier to entry. Just like before, we don't have many rotational abilities, but this time we have slightly more maintenance with Rend. Some minor differences between both specs include Arms having slightly more utility, a more complicated burst sequence, and unlike Fury, cannot press its major defensive while stunned. Speaking of which, we're also including Ret Paladin in the easy category. We don't want to remind you about the legions of Ret Paladins created last season, but aside from being giga broken for a few weeks, Ret Paladins exploded because of their low barrier to entry. While the rotation can have some nuance, Ret Paladins have one of the most streamlined win conditions in Arena, revolving around one of the best offensives in the game, all with a one minute cooldown with less emphasis on control. Despite having some unique utility options and off-healing potential, Red Paladins are easy to pick up for anyone looking to quickly climb in Season 2. Our last easy melee is probably the most contentious. In early Season 1, Demon Hunters were easily one of the best, if not the absolute best DPS spec in the game. Much of this was due to their high damage output being combined with increased defensive bulk, which were both eventually nerfed. So while DH might have been the quintessential easy DPS in previous patches, it is less forgiving these days. In any case, with some of the best mobility out of any melee, Demon Hunters in Season 2 will continue to excel in their ability to pump out damage while having easily chainable ranged CC. If being an easy melee means having all these qualities, then being hard means breaking some rules. 
Both Sub and Outlaw Rogue will be our first rule breakers and are some of the least forgiving melee DPS. Of course, the elephant in the room is that Rogue can sometimes feel broken. While that's certainly true, it is consistently less forgiving compared to other melee. At its core, both Sub and Outlaw Rogue revolves around setting up kills with CC, which leads to more complicated win conditions since DRs and enemy defensives are more relevant for calculating a kill. Rogues also take a lot of damage, more so than almost any other melee. This is why their defensives need to be strong, since without them, rogues are super squishy. Is the class fun? Yes. Is it broken? Sometimes. But is it easy to play for beginners? Not so much. The same concept applies to Feral Druid, who, just like Rogue, have a lot of multitasking responsibilities. Now in 10.1, Feral has the added task of using Cyclone thanks to the Wild Attunement PvP talent. This means in order to min-max damage output, Ferals need to leave form and hard cast. Not so streamlined. This is layered on top of their already bloated damage rotation, which includes multiple dots to maintain and unique damage modifiers to min-max output. If all this wasn't enough, Feral Druids have enormous CC potential in various different forms, from stuns to roots to knockbacks, which are all required for setting up kills and surviving. Somewhere in the middle of both extremes, we have medium difficulty melee. Both DK specs are perfect examples, but especially Frost. Rotationally, Frost is pretty simple. In fact, its burst rotation literally involves pressing two abilities back to back repeatedly until Pillar of Frost is over. The complex part of Frost is what to do in between setups, where its damage output tanks faster than Mitz Jones getting ready for another 420 2v2 attempt. This can make Frost DK feel difficult conceptually because it runs out of damage so quickly and needs to stall the game and work towards its next setup. Assassination Rogue is another great example of a medium difficulty melee. Are they mechanically easy? Yes. Their rotation, despite being maintenance heavy, is very intuitive and when done correctly is insanely powerful. This is offset by the fact that rogues are just squishy, with assassination being the most frail between all three specs. So even though it might be easy to deal damage and get lots of mileage by just pressing kidney shot every DR, this can sometimes feel impossible with two melee training you down. Survival Hunter also falls into our medium difficulty, but there could be an argument for bumping them up to hard. Unlike its other specs, Survival Hunter needs to play way more pushed in since it performs best while in melee range. Unfortunately, to excel as survival, a fair amount of weaving in and out of the fight is required to manage the endless wave of damage from other melee. When you combine this with a win condition revolving around CC, survival is much less straightforward compared to the brawlers of the Season 2 meta. Windwalker Monk is in a fairly similar position. Rotationally, Monk is more complicated than some of the other melee on our list. With multiple damage sources and a mastery effect that punishes button spamming, Windwalker can sometimes feel more like a fighting game character. Just like Frost DK, Windwalker is also heavily invested in one minute win conditions, which means fishing for moments to set up kills and then being able to stall in between. Taken together, this can make Windwalker much less intuitive compared to other melee. Finally, wrapping up our medium difficulty melee is Enhancement Shaman. Damage-wise, Enhancement isn't that demanding, with only a few globals to manage. The true difficulty in Enhancement Shaman is making the most out of the downtime in between damage globals, which is where it needs to fit in utility like Purge, Off Heals, and various highly unique totems. In fact, this extra emphasis on utility is what sets Enhance apart from something like a Ret Paladin, despite both specs being true hybrids. In order to make the most out of Shaman, you need to be constantly pressing a wide range of GCDs since you cannot rely on damage alone. Moving on to easy range DPS, we have a few changes to our ranking system. To be considered easy, we will still think about rotations, but this time we'll need to consider how to manage interrupts, the ability to easily tank or avoid damage, and having fail-proof CC. The spec that routinely checks all of these boxes is Beast Mastery Hunter. Of course, being a pet-based class means offloading some damage to NPCs, but the true strength in BM is how efficiently it can deal damage while moving, allowing players to maintain consistent DPS even while needing to kite. Does BM have some buff management and need to land consistent CC to win? Yes, but at its core, Beast Mastery is all about pumping out as much damage as possible, which is why it's one of the most approachable range DPS in the game, despite technically being a setup-based spec. Marksmanship Hunter is not much different mechanically, but does require some additional nuance. For one, Marks actually needs to do a bit of hard casting. Even though aimed shot can't be interrupted, it means being a bit more precise with positioning to ensure enemy players don't simply line your burst. Again though, just like BM, Marks is still able to be incredibly mobile while having a very scripted and almost guaranteed CC combo. Freezing Trap might technically be a skill shot, but with instant arming times it is still easier to land even after nerfs to intimidation and scatter duration. Our next easy range DPS is a bit more unconventional, with Destro Warlock taking a spot in our list. 
Obviously, the difficulty of playing any caster is the need to actually cast, which means dealing with interrupts and micro CCs. Destro is well equipped for dealing with the highly disruptive meta thanks to its multiple spell schools and plethora of instant cast damage options. Destro has the best instant cast damage in the game, with Shadow Burn, Conflag, Dimensional Rift, and sometimes even Incinerate being instant cast. The only maintenance spell that truly needs to be hard casted is Immolate, which is on a completely different school than Fear, Shadow Burn, and even Chaos Bolt. These days, Chaos Bolt is basically a filler spell rather than a core rotational ability, which makes Destro Warlock damage feel super unpredictable and makes the spec very approachable for a beginner. The only other true caster DPS in our easy category is Balance Druid. Despite a rocky start to Season 1, Boomkin started seeing enormous gains towards the end of the 07 patch thanks to a shifting meta. Now with stamina values increased and overall stun durations being lower, Boomkin is now in a position to truly flourish and is a good pickup for beginners in Season 2. Most of its damage output revolves around instant casts, while having one of the most consistent and guaranteed CC options with Root Beam. With higher haste values in Season 2, Boomkins will now be able to get even more CC out thanks to the fast cast clones of Owlkin Frenzy. Once again, if being an easy range DPS means having all of these qualities, then being hard means falling short. Out of every spec in WoW, Arcane Mage might be the most unforgiving, which might help explain why it's consistently one of the lowest represented specs, despite being played at high ratings and in tournaments. Arcane is one spell school for almost all of its abilities, which means getting interrupted renders them completely useless. Because of this, in order to truly excel as an Arcane Mage, you need to heavily rely on more fundamental mechanics like juking and advanced game knowledge like spacing and microbursting to overcome some of its defensive hurdles. Devastation Evoker also falls into our hard category for ranged DPS. Some people consider Evoker to be a one-trick or a cheesy slot machine, but even if you agree, it doesn't necessarily make the spec easy or forgiving. The biggest advantage Devastation has over Arcane Mage is the ability to cycle through spell schools, which Evoker has plenty of. Instead, where Evoker falls short is in its defensive toolkit, where it heavily relies on precise mobility trading to compensate for weaker personal defenses. Finally, rounding out the hard difficulty for ranged DPS is Shadow Priest due to having some demanding utility options. While the 10.1 patch might have restructured its damage toolkit, Shadow has kept its identity as a utility and setup focused hybrid, which in many ways makes it the ultimate pace setter being able to dictate the flow of the game on both sides of the field. This gives it two additional layers of complexity, especially since its damage output is tied to a single spell school. Just like any hybrid, Shadow has a lot of potential and requires a bit of game knowledge, which makes it a good balance of difficult and rewarding. Sandwiched in the middle of easy and hard is Demo Warlock. In the past, Demo was widely considered to be one of the most noob-friendly caster specs. Much of this was due to the fact that it had multiple sources of instant cast damage, coming mostly from NPC pet damage. But now with the rework to Master Summoner, Call Dreadstalkers now has a cast time, and the loss of the Season 1 tier set means no more instant Hand of Gul'dan. Combined, this will make Demo noticeably more difficult, but still approachable for most players. The true skill cap of Demo is being able to manage all of its CC options, where it has access to almost every single major DR category. Affliction Warlock is also in our medium difficulty, and this requires a more honest evaluation. First, let's be clear, Affliction does suffer quite a bit from limited spell schools. With highly disruptive melee and tons of micro CC, getting off real damage as a Warlock can be challenging. But with game-wide nerfs to interrupts and micro CCs, Affliction is much better suited to handle the Season 2 meta. On top of this, unlike Arcane Mage, Affliction is a true single-tasking DPS. Generally speaking, its goal is to maximize damage, putting far less emphasis on control compared to mage overall. In many ways, Affliction is just a damage bot, which makes your role easier to understand no matter what the matchup. Elemental Shaman takes up our next medium difficulty slot for similar reasons. Although its damage rotation was at one time considered a popular meme, Elemental is still prone to getting bullied by melee DPS, which means it needs to be a bit more creative when establishing space to safely deal damage. If the Season 2 meta is caster heavy, then Elemental will probably have a much better time. In any case, just like Enhancement, the true skill cap of Ellie is avoiding dead globals and filling up GCDs with a diverse set of utility options. Finally, filling our last spots for medium difficulty range DPS are the remaining mage specs. Both Fire and Frost have the spell school advantage over Arcane, since their main damage school is separate from Polymorph and Counterspell. This makes getting interrupted far less punishing, and removes some of the mechanical issues associated with Arcane. As a big disclaimer, however, Mage is overall less forgiving in Dragonflight compared to previous expansions, and with the removal of Netherwind armor in 10.1, the class has become even more of a glass cannon, which is why it shouldn't be surprising that a major overhaul to Mage is coming next patch. 
Moving on to healers, our criteria has to change once again. Healing might be harder in general in Dragonflight, but some specs have a lower barrier to entry. Last season, this could have been Fistweaver, but that's gone for now. At least we hope. Anyway, to make healing feel easier, we are looking for simple rotations, multiple defensive options, including CDs that can guarantee your teammates don't die, and finally, some form of CC avoidance. The healer that checks all those boxes is Disc Priest. Even though in the past, Disc was considered a mechanically demanding healer, it's been increasingly forgiving throughout Dragonflight. With the addition of double pain suppression and Shadow Covenant converting penance to shadow, today's version of Disc Priest has more cooldowns and has held onto two healing spell schools. On top of this, 10.1 has introduced two major buffs to Disc Priest's CC avoidance, with Death now being a 10 second cooldown and the newly added Phase Shift talent offering Disc a weakened version of Greater Fade. Taken together, Disc Priest is much stronger and even more forgiving than it's ever been, making it perfect to pick up in Season 2. Finally, we have Holy Paladin on the easy difficulty position. This comes with one huge disclaimer, sometimes Holy Paladins feel weak in the meta, but they are still mechanically simple enough to meet our criteria for easy. Mechanically, Holy Paladins are the Fury Warriors of healers, having a few rotational spells combined with one major resource dump. This, on top of a straightforward set of defensive cooldowns, is what traditionally makes Holy Paladin easy. The one thing that can sometimes skew Holy Paladin's difficulty is its healing output, which makes using those cooldowns more important and makes those buttons less impactful to press. So while Holy Paladin might technically be mechanically easy, it can come with a few output hurdles depending on balance. Our first healer on the hard tier is Resto Shaman. After their buffs and subsequent nerfs in Season 1, Resto Shaman has returned back to its roots as one of the more conceptually complicated healers. Its main difficulty is how and when it needs to use key major defenses. Other healers had the luxury of being able to press highly reactive cooldowns to prevent kills after damage has happened. Resto Shamans, on the other hand, need to be way more proactive in using cooldowns by pre-placing Earthen Wall or being quick to reposition a Healing Tide to avoid alerting the weak aura alarm system. Outside of highly proactive cooldown trading, Resto Shaman often needs to play a more supportive role with its team, keeping up or stalling momentum with Wind Shears, Grounding Totem, Knockbacks, Vortex, and even Lightning Lasso, which means way more multitasking compared to throughput based healers. In the middle of both extremes, we have Resto Druid, which is first up in medium difficulty. The complexity of the spec is due almost entirely to the fact that its healing output is maintenance heavy. To heal well, you have to plan multiple globals in advance and never fall behind. Although this might seem intimidating, the difficulty curve is offset slightly by the fact that Resto is one of the more passive healers with some of the best mobility. This makes it easy to avoid some of the CC traps that other healers face when needing to position. In many ways, the difficulty of Mistweaver is the mirror of Druid. Mistweaver is also a maintenance heavy healer, with various buff maintenance and vulnerability to interrupts, but one of the bigger learning curves is mastering positioning as a monk. Not only do you have to position defensively in a way to avoid CC and interrupts, but you also have to think about the position of your port while juggling this with the need to sometimes push in and play aggressive with CC. It's a difficult balancing act, and why Mistweaver is usually one of the least popular healers to alt. Preservation of Ochre also fits the bill of a maintenance heavy and positionally difficult healer. The one thing that truly sets preservation apart from Druid and Monk is its need to play highly aggressive. Preservation of Ochre feels much more involved offensively compared to other healers, since it needs to not only support with CC but also with damage. This leaves Evoker constantly exposed to the enemy team and is why many Evokers need so many cooldowns, because without them, they would be too easy to kill or even just CC. As our last medium difficulty healer, we have Holy Priest. Going into the expansion, Holy lost some of the tech that made its healing rotation buttery smooth in Shadowlands, and for a while the spec was gatekept by its lackluster healing output. But now, with a series of hotfixes aimed at buffing its healing, and with one of the best tier sets in the game, Holy Priest should be much easier in Season 2. The true difficulty of Holy Priest will be tied to mechanics, where its healing output and defensive CDs are tied to a single spell school, which means Holy generally needs to hardcast more than other healers. That brings us to the final difficulty rankings of every spec in WoW PvP. Remember that we're talking about skill floors, which is the minimum amount of effort needed to perform well in Arena. Generally speaking, the difficulty of DPS is tied to win conditions and how much multitasking needs to be done to actually score a kill. For healers, difficulty is tied to things like maintenance and recovery options. Having a low skill floor is different than having a high skill ceiling, which is the true beauty of PvP, since there is always the potential to improve. 
Before we wrap things up, we want to tell you about another exciting new feature at SkillCap.com. For a limited time, SkillCap members can submit their gameplay to be reviewed by Rank 1 Gladiators, who will watch through arena footage and give personalized advice for how to improve. These reviews are added to our hundreds of arena commentaries and are quickly becoming one of the best resources for hitting your goals and getting the rating you've always wanted. Last season, we helped thousands of PvPers hit their rating goals from Challenger all the way up to Rank 1. So what are you waiting for? Visit the links in the description below to start your journey today. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this one. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. What spec do you think is easiest to learn in WoW PvP? As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.